for more chat about geek entertainment, answers to your questions, and news from the wider world of Christian geekery, get the Christian Geek Central podcast today on iTunes and other podcast services. Well, my editing skills are crap, but can the same thing be said about the DC animated movie Justice League Dark? Stick around and find out. And Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions here with my uncut review of the DC animated movie Justice League Dark, the final movie in this week, our uh, second annual March Movie Madness Week. Uh, the synopsis on IMDb, actually there are a couple of them here, I'll read them both, reads, Beings with supernatural powers join together to fight against supernatural villains. This team of supernatural beings includes John Constantine, Zatanna, and Jason Blood, also known as the Demon Etrigan. There's actually more than just that that... Uh, uh, kind of come into the story eventually. Who else are we missing? Um, Swamp Thing. And, oh, and Batman. And did they mention Dead Man? Dead Man's in it too. So that, that it really doesn't cover all of them at all. Uh, Justice League Dark is what it sounds like. It's the dark side of justice. A group of supernatural heroes who band together loosely to take on occult threats, supernatural threats, threats that the real Justice League may be powerless against. Okay, so... Uh, it's a pretty basic story. There's an evil force that's causing normal people to kill innocent people, including, like, their loved ones, their family members. So, I mean, this movie starts with the, the dark tone right from the very beginning, and you can tell from the first five minutes, oh, okay, we're doing something different here. <laughs> I mean, DC as a universe tends to be darker than, say, Marvel, but uh, even compared to the other DC Universe animated movies, this one uh, is really going pretty dark. And I mean, it has an R rating, so you might suspect that going in. But there, I think there's a difference between something being merely violent and bloody and being really dark in its tone. You can have something that's very bloody and violent and gory that, it, that is actually pretty light and humorous, you know, if you want to go in that direction. But this one very dark tone from the very start you know and it's it's interesting because the 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 other members of the traditional members of the justice league like superman and flash and wonder woman and green lantern um they all they all make at least i think brief appearances in this movie before they kind of have to hand it off uh to a different set of people in the DC universe to take on this threat and you feel that I think that that juxtaposition most strongly in this early scene where Superman confronts really this sobering horrifying evil and it just you, you just kind of look at that scene and at least I was thinking to myself oh man I don't I don't think Superman is like emotionally maybe going to be up for this. Like this is getting too dark for him, you know. Um, so Batman is the one traditional member of the Justice League that does stick around for the whole movie. Uh, he systematically recruits people appropriate for this kind of case, starting with Zatanna, who he personally has some history with. Um, and we get a we get brief but adequate origins and backgrounds for each of the characters that's introduced. If we don't get a retelling of their origin, we at least get enough information about who and what they are to kind of uh, accept them and their role in, in the story. Then they progressively, as a group, take on a series of DC supernatural enemies in hopes of tracking down the ultimate culprit for what's happening to people in, in the world. Uh, as I said, it's not a complex story. It does have one unexpected turn that I appreciated. It's more about these characters, getting to know these, an introduction of these characters and seeing them interact with each other is a major part, which I always appreciate in any uh, story. If it has that kind of character focus and, and you have these different personalities uh, rubbing up against each other uh, in the midst of this, you know, a series of situations that are made for them to show off their stuff, the cool supernatural things they can do, whether that's dead man possessing people, including Batman at one point, <laughs> to just do what he wants with their bodies, um, or if it's, you know, more like the spell casting stuff of Zatanna and John Constantine. You get Swamp Thing in there doing stuff as he is one with the green and all this kind of stuff. You get the demon Etrigan coming in and, and doing stuff that's not just mystical but also is very brutal and physical in nature as well. So uh, it economic, it, it's got economical pacing as all of these uh, DC animated movies do and it really scratches my itch for visible, spectacular 
sword and sorcery type magic stuff going on. Um, but in a modern setting, which wouldn't be my preference if I want to get that itch scratched, but I'll take it here, uh, especially since it's in the DC universe, a universe that I, I know well and love. And, and it's got a dark tone, which I also really appreciate. So uh, just talking briefly about the cast, you know, these DC movies, in my estimation, are pretty consistent in the voice acting quality. I, I, I always feel like it's solid stuff. It's never overdone and weird or goofy. You know, it, it just seems to really sit where I want it to sit in terms of being both expressive and grounded. You know, it, it fits the medium, you know. Uh, but I, I would say on a meta level, a standout performer is going to be Matt Ryan for maybe a number of viewers. He was the actor that played John Constantine in the short-lived live-action series. And so I think that fans of that series uh, will be interested in seeing him continue that role in a different setting here. I want to say that I might have heard a rumor that they're trying to get that rebooted and maybe it's going to, it's looking like it'll happen. But anyway, that's a side note. The rest are all, I think, solid performances. It's a mix of returning actors playing roles that they've played before in the DC animated movies and new actors for roles that, uh, that we haven't seen done yet. Um, as far as the uh, visuals go, this one was released in 2017 and it maintains the solid art quality and animation that these animated DC movies are known for. Uh, I particularly enjoy the ornate and mysterious complexity of the different spell glyphs as John Constantine would be casting his spells. And, and despite the theme being magic, you know, which might sound like just dudes standing around and chanting at each other, no, there is plenty of, like, rock'em sock'em action throughout this whole thing. And, uh, and the, 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 the choreography of that, the visual representation of that is the, the, the high quality I would expect from DC animated movies. Uh, all right, so what about themes? Is there anything of moral philosophical or spiritual significance going on in the themes of this thing that might uh, trigger some worthwhile thought or conversation. Well, maybe not uh, uh, stuff that's really especially unique to this movie. I, I find that, and I found this to be the case with this movie as well, that in many supernatural movies, evil is handled better as an idea, as a concept, than it is in other genres. Uh, in lots of other genres, we get, you know, the, the follow your heart mantra, you know, we get, we get a relativism of, of morality, we don't see evil as this really striking thing that has to be dealt with, and supernatural or dark movies uh, tend to uh, present evil as really evil, and that, I think, is the case in this movie as well. Evil in this story is mistaken for good at least once. Following our hearts and doing what feels good can lead to hurting ourselves and other people, and there's an example of that in this movie. John Constantine alone is this morally complex character who is immensely selfish and immoral, but is still often instrumental in accomplishing good, which reminds me of how God can even use the evil choices of people to bring about his will. Um, you might also, you know, ask yourself, I don't know, how should we feel as Christians about watching a movie with protagonists who practice something that is somewhat like real-world witchcraft? Uh, I would refer you to a couple of videos that uh, are up on the Christian Geek Central YouTube channel. The first is, Is Fictional Magic Sinful to Enjoy? Which kind of deals with that topic of how should we feel about um, fictional forms of magic in, in entertainment. Uh, but then there, there might be the remaining question of, okay, well, what if we're talking about a story where they are basically doing the doing real world uh, occult practices and real world witchcraft. How should we feel about uh, rooting for a protagonist who is doing that? You know, or any number of other uh, you know sinful behaviors. You know, what about playing as a character like that in a game of some kind? So, uh, for those that might be wondering about that, I would refer you to my video: Can Christians be evil in games? Yes, the video is focused on games, but uh, I think that uh, if you can uh, if if you can find a, a, a it, how do I say this? Um, this is the problem with doing these things uncut and not scripted. Um, if you can be in a place where it is, uh, where you're comfortable with and is biblically justifiable and you have freedom in Christ to play as an evil character in a game, I think much more so we can feel the freedom to watch uh, characters doing evil things in movies. So I think that even though it's focused on games, that the principles in that video very much apply to uh, questions about like, well, should we root for protagonists in stories that are, you know, doing things like this? So anyway, Can Christians Be Evil in Games is the other video that I would uh, refer you to. Now, I have no idea what your tastes are in movies or animation or anything like that, but if I were a time traveler, I'd go back and time and say, 
Schrader. Um, buy this one. Uh, you know, wait till it's used so you can get it for a good price. These DC movies uh, usually uh, pop down just a few months after they're released to a, a pretty decent price. Um, after loving Justice League Dark Apocalypse War so much, which was the movie that brought to a close the shared continuity that they did for a while with the DC animated movies. After enjoying that so much, appreciating that so much, you're going to want to go back and give this one a try because it is kind of a sequel to that uh, to, to, to Justice League Dark. But uh, uh, even so, you know, you've been enjoying catching up on Justice, the Justice League Dark comic book uh, and uh, while you've been using the DC Universe Infinite service, you like Sword and Sorcery, you like DC comics, you know, historically you haven't really been interested in the wide range of supernatural characters in the DC Universe, but give this one a try, because surprise, surprise, you're going to like it. Uh, this one is rated R for some disturbing violence, and I guess I would just add as a comment, personally, I find uh, violence and gore in animation to be less disturbing and uh, kind of visceral and intense than seeing a live-action version of that, and so for me, an experience like this is more of a PG-13 type of experience, uh, but again, uh, that, uh, that information is for your own discernment to uh, figure out. Rated R for some disturbing disturbing violence. All right, those are my thoughts. Would love to get yours in the comments below. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, click that bell to stay connected to what's going on here. I want to thank the Spirit Blade Insiders for making so many of my reviews possible. You can get info about the benefits of joining at patreon.com slash spiritbladeproductions. And then I hope you'll join us soon over at christiangeekcentral.com as we continue to geek out and seek the truth. The Christian Geek Central podcast is the longest running podcast for Christian geeks with over 600 weekly episodes and counting, featuring audio versions of much of the same content you'll find here, plus exclusive content including weekly news updates from the creators of Christian comics, novels, and video games, debriefing and commentary about what I've been playing, reading, and watching, and my expanded responses to your comments and questions via YouTube, email, or the Christian Geek Central forums. And now, with with timestamps, so you can jump straight to the segments you want to hear most. Get the Christian Geek Central podcast today on iTunes and other podcast services and enjoy one more way you can geek out and seek the truth.